All about that, this Carl Munson here. God, I almost sort of slipped into a um, a fake Portuguese accent there, didn't I? Um, I guess that's just one of the pitfalls of uh, learning a new language and being in a new culture. Anyway, uh, this is the Good Morning Portugal podcast, so I need to say to you, Olá e bem-vindo. So hello and welcome to the Good Morning Portugal podcast. I've got a great one for you today uh, on this Monday, the 15th of October, 2018. Sat in the office, uh, Good Morning Portugal headquarters. And the other day, um, this is the backstory to today's podcast, which is all about um, getting uh, virtual help, uh, virtual PA kind of help, uh, which is an increasingly uh, brilliant and useful phenomenon with the way that uh, uh, internet communication works and technology works uh, for us. And we can be connected with uh, many more people and therefore uh, share and outsource work uh, that we can't do or uh, don't have the specialism for or need help, in this case, uh, from a native person. And yes, in this case, uh, a fantastic virtual PA, virtual assistant called Anna Neto. Uh, Anna's been amazingly helpful to uh, uh, me and uh, my colleagues at OurNet, Uh, in the time that we've been here in Portugal. So I start by saying muito obrigado to uh, Ana. And then I'll let you into a little bit of um, a conversation that we had via email. But the first thing I wanted to say, this is how it came up, is that somebody was saying to me that they were locked in a tussle. This was on a uh, pure Portugal group, I think, or just somebody's own post saying, oh, no, I'm locked up with EDP. They're going to cut me off. They say I haven't been in touch. I have been in touch. And now I'm going through to a call centre and I can't speak Portuguese. What do I do? So I thought the first and most easy thing to do would be to hire a virtual PA. And uh, Anna Neto came to mind, uh, who's, helped, like I say, helped me in the past. So I dropped Anna a line and I said to her, you know, is it all right to advertise your services? As it turns out, uh, this other person who was locked in a uh, difficulty with EDP managed to sort it out. And I can imagine it would have been a bit of a nightmare. And just handing it over to someone like Anna, uh, who can speak the local language, who probably understands how EDP work a little better, would have just sorted it out uh, very quickly. And uh, just to let you know, she charges, I think it's 15 euros an hour. And she even... Uh, calculates that down to each minute of working. So I think that's really great value, especially as if she, if she um, bills you by the minute rather than the hour or part thereof, as I think lawyers do that, don't they? So even if you speak to them for three minutes, they're going to charge you for the whole hour. Anna does not do that. Uh, anyway, this is the, a fantastic conversation we had. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on your podcast, as Anna, in our email communications, both hilarious and educational. Thank you very much. I'm a northern person, she was saying, and for those who are Portuguese, this doesn't require explanation. Historically, the companies set their headquarters in the south of the country, and uh, that's where the HQs were and where the CEOs were. On the other hand, the factories were in the north because the workers were cheaper, and this disparity still exists today. So this is fantastic cultural insight. There is a north south divide in portugal in the south there's a tendency to earn double in the north and consequently the cost of living is higher in the south than it is in the north so traditionally the north was populated with working class people of low schooling says anna which sounds really harsh in it low schooling um, we are known to curse in every sentence we say but at the same time i think it has developed a kind of specific dialect that only those who are from the north understand it's a bit like england isn't it with its north south divide and quite similarly matched too i would say so i think some of the words i'm going to present to you are not really common in the vocabulary of the rest of the country and that's fantastic i did ask anna if she would give me three pieces of vocabulary and i knew they would be good ones and they are so here we go i don't know if i don't know if you've had a chance to visit porto but the gastronomic attraction there is francesina francesina and i'm sure i will be con- corrected on my pronunciation uh francesina french which is the first word that I wanted to present you. The word itself is curious because if you had to translate it, it would be something like little French girl, basically. Yeah, and can you imagine going into a Porto restaurant and ordering a little French girl? That's just wrong in every way, isn't it? But uh, just to save you your embarrassment and possible imprisonment, um, a francesina is a meat sandwich covered with cheese and topped with an orangey sauce, super spicy. And it's a hell of a thing when you see it on a bowl. I have seen it, Anna. And um, I don't know if you, if, you, if, if you, my dear listener, haven't seen it. It's an, quite an incredible thing to uh, behold on the bowl in the plate. 
We're going to run over a little bit, probably an extra minute on the podcast today. The second word is carapin, which is a wool sock knitted by hand. There in the south, they probably don't know what it is because when they needed warmer socks, they were able to buy them. But because we were poorer, we couldn't afford it. And that was not long ago. She's born in the 80s. Uh, My grandmother knitted me dozens of these and even sold them to other people. So carapin would be a knitted sock, a hand-knitted sock, carapin. My grandmother knitted me dozens of them, she said, and even sold them to other people. Lastly, third word for you for your Portuguese vocabulary today. Thank you to Anna. Um, The word morsão, morsão, I think I've got the pronunciation right there, is used a lot to describe an apathetic man who doesn't have a lot of action. Basically, who is not very proactive. But people also use it as an incentive too amongst friends. Like, for instance, don't be morsão. Can't you see they want to take advantage of you? So I guess it's a bit sort of lazy and lethargic. Morsal. So there you go. Some words you probably wouldn't see in a Portuguese textbook. Francesina, carapi, morsal. And you can get in touch with Anna via ananeto1, ananeto1 at gmail.com. So if you want some virtual assistant help, go to ananeto1 at gmail.com. Dot com. She doesn't have a website. She doesn't need one. Uh, people just recommend her by word of mouth. So thanks very much again, Anna. You've made this a bumper edition with uh, local cultural insight and some excellent vocabulary there on the Good Morning Portugal podcast. Uh, so that's from me. Até breve. Take care. Bye for now. Carl Munson signing off.